never rest. What is up, everybody? Thursday morning. It's the Georgia Show. I'm Jake Rowe. He's Rusty Mansell. We're from Dogs HQ. And Rusty's packed. Absolutely packed. Uh, they told us, they lied to us, that it was going to be a little slow this time of year. Um, oh, it's God. not. Uh, we got a lot going on. Uh, obviously, the wide receiving coach is still open. Position is still opening. But I think the news that is kind of burgeoning and, and growing upon us here is Del McGee uh, as a candidate at Georgia State. Uh, fill us in. Uh, you know, obviously the the folks over at Dogs HQ are going to get a little bit more insight on this one. That's that's the business. But what can you tell us? Uh, as of nine thirty a.m., he has not been offered the job, and it's like we said, I do expect him to be a real candidate here. And and kind of you know, as a if you're a Georgia fan, you don't want to lose Dale McGee, but I think you kind of understand if he gets a head coaching position, he gets a chance to coach his son Austin, who just signed with Georgia State. Del McGee, very connected in the state of Georgia. He's done a great job at Georgia. He's been a longtime high school coach. He's been at Georgia Southern. He's done a good job. One of the OGs from Kirby Smart staff, original staff. And, uh, you know, it makes sense if he gets it. But, you know, the news is he has not been offered the job. And I talked with someone very close to this. Now, that I, from my understanding, I'm not the Georgia State coaching hire expert. But from my understanding, they're going a couple of more interviews today with the goal of naming a head coach tomorrow. Uh, Buster Faulkner is not uh, a final candidate either as well. I've, I've checked on that. I think Buster Faulkner is going to stay at Georgia Tech. Uh, I think there was a little bit of interest there, but kind of yesterday some news came out. He was a final two, and that's not what I'm hearing on my end. Now, we know how this kind of goes. You Folks kind of see the way things are going, and whether they hear something or whether they're just trying to kind of what I call lead the dove, they're trying to shoot out front of this thing and, and maybe hit it when it runs by. Um, it's one of those things that's like, I think as of right now, if you had to make a call one way or the other, you'd probably say Del McGee ends up as the head coach at, at, at Georgia State. It's not done yet, but there's a good shot of it happening. I think there's a good shot of it happening. I do. Uh, but we, we report the news and unfortunately we have to report news that other people report and, you know, in my where I'm at, that, that news is incorrect. He has not uh, been named the head coach. He has not been offered the job yet. Do I think he's a really good candidate and a really serious candidate? I do. And you know, I've known Dale since I, since he was at Carver. I've known Dale a long time. So, uh, and he's been good to me. And I, I I hope for his case, if that's what he wants to do, he gets this job. But my job is to report what yeah. I'm hearing as of ten oh four. And, uh, you know, because we own a Georgia site together, we have to report the news on our end. Our source is telling us this is not a done deal. So I want to give you kind of the latest. 100%. And, you know, this sometimes. But, you I, gotta, but, I, but I did give a name this morning on Dogs HQ that if Dale McGee leaves, I think this guy will be the front runner uh, for the job. And I think it would be a hell of a hire for Georgia if it happens. And I heard a few murmurs that that would be that you would be correct on that. And come on over, check that out. Um one of the things that that you run into with these types of things, though, is like you – it's happened to us, Rusty, I swear to God, you and I have been working together right around 10 years, and it's happened to us dozens and dozens of times where, yeah, okay, we, we've reported that this is – you know, this is – could happen, maybe even likely to happen, but you do have to kind of pull back on it and say, but it hasn't happened yet. One of those that comes out in terms of mine was Will Muschamp being hired to staff a few – several years ago. Um, you know, we reported, hey, we think it's going to happen. He was with the team during bowl practices for the Peach Bowl that year when Georgia played Cincinnati. We saw it coming. Um, we heard it was coming, but it hadn't happened yet. There were still some things to iron out, and there was still some interest from other parties, and it hadn't been finalized. So you kind of have to push back on that, and that's kind of the way this goes. One point I do want to point out for Georgia fans, though, let's say Del McGee takes that Georgia State job, Rusty. I don't know how many of the off seasons that Dell McGee has has been at Georgia that the rumors have swirled that Auburn was going to come swoop up their former Tiger, or I guess he'll always be a Tiger, but form, swoop up their former defensive back there and get Dell McGee um, back on staff. Uh, silver lining for this, you know, you don't want to lose a coach of Dell McGee's caliber, but it doesn't seem like Georgia's going to lose him to Auburn, which is uh, a little bit of a bragging rights thing, I believe. 
yeah, it's always kind of a, a threat. And, you know, if you're Auburn, you always kind of hope that you got yeah. him, especially when he was recruiting, you know, at a high level and getting players. And, uh, but uh, I think when they got Cadillac, you kind of thought, well, that's, that's not going to happen for a while. And then Cadillac leaves and, uh, but Dale, you know, credit to Dale, credit to Georgia. I think he's the highest paid running back coach in the country. Yep. So, so, you know, if you, if you happy where you are, and I knew he had a kid in high school, I've known Austin now since eighth grade, really good player, gotten bigger at Athens Academy, signed with Georgia state. Congratulations to him. So when you got a family and you're entrenched in Athens and your son, I believe that's his only, I believe that's his only kid. Um, uh, and if you got a son that's firmly entrenched in high school, you're not going to uproot him for, for something that's questioned. So your son graduates, your son signs with Georgia State. I mean, the writing's kind of on the wall there if he gets this opportunity. And I think everybody understands. I think you can read the comments there that uh, everybody kind of understands and hopes the best for him. You hate to lose him, but that's what you want for people, man, in life. Like, mm-hmm. let this guy, this guy's done a hell of a job for Georgia. And uh, if he does leave for a head coaching position, that's like Sam Pittman. I don't think anybody was mad that Sam Pittman left. You know, I mean, Sam Pittman left the Georgia offensive line room so so deep that for three years after he left, there were still players there that verbally committed to him um, and stayed. And Tate Rattledge verbally. Xavier Trust signed with Sam Pittman. Xavier Trust and 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 Tate Rattledge were you know two of his last. Guys, and they're still so, Wilson, another yeah. one committed yep. to Sam Pittman. Yeah, yes, wish those guys the best, and uh, and that'd be the case for Dale if he were to get this job. One hundred percent. I mean, listen, you got Fran Brown is another one right here this off season, and that that listen, this is another opportunity for Kirby Smart's coaching tree to grow. Um, and and you know, it's Dale's been instrumental. I feel like in in what Georgia has done. Obviously, I mean. You know, coming in and, and coaching up, you know, Nick Chubb and Sony Michelle, and and obviously those guys were extremely, you know, talented players and big time players, and I get that. But you get DeAndre Swift, you get James Cook, and and, and I know James Coley played a big role in that as well. Uh, you get, uh, you know, Zamir White. You recruit guys like Michael Williams and and Roderick, you help out guys in, who's that? Roderick. Broderick Jones, you know, yeah, you help out with all those guys in the Atlanta area in the state of Georgia that Dell McGee has has played a role in over the years. And listen, I know that like on our website, man, you look at a, one of the things I I like that we do this because it helps you keep track. But you look you look at a profile and you see a recruiter, you see a primary and a secondary recruiter. Sometimes there's a guy that's tertiary. Sometimes there's a guy that's like third in line there that's also playing a big role in that thing that you don't see or, or a group of coaches. And uh, I feel like, and I hope I'm right in saying this rusty because I, I, you know, I'm new to the recruiting game after being old to it. I feel like Dell has played a role in a lot of recruitments, you know, dozens and dozens of recruitments since he's been at Georgia on both sides of the ball. Metro Atlanta for sure. So that's yeah. why I think, you know, Justin Fields lead recruiter was Dale McGee. Yeah. So, you know, he's done really good in Metro Atlanta, and that's where he's been strong. And if he gets his job, this makes sense there. I mean, you look at that in Metro Atlanta, and I think that's one thing that Georgia State uh, – again, I don't want to talk about Georgia State for 30 minutes, but that's one thing I think Georgia State could improve on is I, – I don't know the ins and outs of that program, but I, I don't understand why they don't have more players from the state of Georgia, uh, players going all over the country at different levels. And I, I just think if Dale were to get that job, he's going to be able to do a good job there and keeping some of these guys home. Before you, before we uh, move on here, I do want to point out. Um, I keep going back to when we think about the thing you touched on earlier about having a chance to coach your son. I go back to that moment with Will Muschamp in the in the uh, Orange Bowl and how cool it was for him to be there for that. Uh, it's such a golden opportunity, Rusty. You and I know it because you know we've you know we've coached our own kids and things like that. It's like it's a chance to not miss a thing. Like you don't have to like mom doesn't have to divide forces and, and be somewhere else. And, you know, dad can be there for every practice and every game. And, and the son, listen, Dale's son may not love it at, at times having his dad be the head coach. Um, but but ultimately, it's an opportunity for this family just to not miss a single thing that goes on for the next three or four years of their son's college football career. Yeah, I see a couple of questions there. Barry Watkins a couple of times have asked us there in the comments, how many existing running backs will enter the portal because of this? First of all, it has to happen first. So let's let's say ifs. 
Um, you don't know that. I mean, all those guys will go through spring with a new coach and see how they like it, see where they are depth-wise. It doesn't mean that some running backs with the left to tell was there anyway because they're bringing in three. They're bringing in Dwight Phillips, Chauncey Bowens, and the number one country, number one running back in the country, uh, Nate Frazier. Oh, by the way, you have a uh, – oh, by the way, you have um, – a transfer coming in from Florida, ETN, who I heard he's doing really, really well in the uh, offseason workout. So, who would have thought? I, I, th- I think there got to be some movement in the running back room. I, I, I wouldn't, it'd just be pure speculation. There's nothing to base that off of yet. But I think there's got to be maybe some spec, some, some movement with some of those guys in that room, maybe post uh, in April. We'll see what happens there at spring practice. But I can't tell you, Barry, right now. I mean, it would just be a pure BS answer, to be honest with you, because it's all speculative until. Couple things happen. It wouldn't surprise me if there was. It wouldn't surprise me if there wasn't either, because you look at Dwight Phillips, uh, probably not ready to be a a running back, running back for you. You know, probably not ready to be one of those guys that you know you're going to rely on. You know, to to stand beside the quarterback and run an inside zone or a or a trap play counter or something like that. He's he's probably more of a gadget guy early in his career with that speed and being a little bit light in the pants. Branson Robinson coming back from. I cannot stress enough one of the most gruesomely painful knee injuries you could possibly have, and I know he's going to work hard to get back from it. Um, you know, th- th- got a big room there uh, with six or seven guys, depending on how you count Dwight Phillips. Uh, but wouldn't shock me if all those guys stuck around. Also, wouldn't shock me if any of them left. It never does anymore. That's the uh, that's the one thing I try to get across to people now. It's just kind of like, hey, do you think so and so is going to enter the portal? Um, I mean, sometimes we get a little bit of a heads up. You start hearing things that a guy might enter the portal. But I'm always like, yeah, I could see it because I've seen it happen when it didn't make any sense. Yeah, we were we were pretty sure about three three additional names were going to leave Georgia and this portal. Good players, they didn't. So you just you never know, man. You never know with this deal. But th- this is going to be really interesting. This 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 April fifteenth through May first two week portal. Um, it's no longer another. Th- Last year it was thirty days. I think it was April fifteenth through May fifteenth. And now it's going to be uh, 15, 14 days, two weeks. So uh, we'll see what happens. But that that is down the road. We're working on one thing at a time now. That is Georgia has one opening at wide receiver. We gave you the latest update this morning on Dogs HQ, where they are, and a name I could not rule out yet, which has got some discussion going on our message board. Um, and then you go to the potential of a running back job being open if Del McGee were to get this Georgia State. So, like you said, never a quiet week. You're sitting here in February thinking it's going to be a good quiet week, and I've been doing this long enough to know that uh, it, it just doesn't happen that way. It don't happen, man. It doesn't happen, and I, I'm thankful that they don't happen because we we need something to do. You know, we get we got to keep you guys going, and we're yeah. going to find something to do no matter what. So let's talk about this receiver coach opening, Rusty. Um, you know, we we updated everybody on Tuesday. What's changed? Nothing really. Still doing interviews. You know, I think that's uh, – I think we've been consistent in that. And, uh, we, and um, I think the timeline from what I'm hearing is they want to have something done early next week. So you do a couple of Zooms on that and uh, added a – we didn't add. We mentioned a familiar name this morning. I think a lot of fans on here would know. We also – Gave some names of some guys uh, earlier in the week that we think are uh, in on this deal, and uh, nothing's really changed. They're going through the process here. I did say I did note early this week that uh, there've been a lot of calls from all over the country, and uh, one source told me late last night, man, they have been flooded with calls. They're trying to figure out who actually gets an interview, who's actually going to be on the board here. So uh, you know, this is important hire as as any position on the field at Georgia would be, and. Like I said, I think you're going to – to me, you know, what I know about this deal, uh, it's going to be one of those deals where you're going to be connected to the state of Georgia. If Georgia loses Brian McClendon and Dale McGee, you're losing two guys that yeah. are extremely connected in the state of Georgia and in metro Atlanta specifically. So, uh, you know, you got to replace that. you got to have some guys that know some people there that are, that are known uh, when they walk in that school that, hey, you know, we know you. You've been here. You've been recruiting, and you know the lay of the land, and and uh, you know you know where Waycross, Georgia is, and you know where Kennesaw, Georgia is, and uh, that's that's going to be important in my opinion. Yeah, traffic pattern is a little different in those two places. I do believe. Uh, hey, listen, I want to go ahead and remind everybody: if you've got any questions, go ahead and get them in. We want to take a few a few minutes after uh, we kind of get through with the news here to answer a few questions. So get those in so that you can fire them away um, here in a few minutes. But 
Rusty, when when I think about this receiving coach position, you know, we we had the question asked, well, you know, balancing out, you know, recruiting and 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 coaching and and things like that. We we've talked about some of the candidates. Um, has has anybody new popped up that that you've thought of? And I know you've talked about one name that's that you're not ruling out over at Dogs HQ. We're definitely gonna gonna tease that one. But uh, what else is uh, is anybody anybody new popped up? And is that surprising you at all? Um. I don't know everything behind the scenes and that's, that's, you know what I mean? That's the, that's what we're, that's what the pieces of puzzle we're trying to figure out. I have been steady, consistent. And I think Josh Crawford at Georgia tech is a name to know. He's got, uh, you know, you look at the resume, he's coached at Lee County. He's, he's coached at, um, somebody corrected me on YouTube, uh, Colquitt County. Uh, I've been going to Moultrie for years and I'm North Georgia. So it's Colquitt. I don't know how to pronounce it from Colquitt, how, how we pronounce it there, but, He's from the Packers. I know that. And uh, he's been at Valdosta. He's been at Greater Atlanta Christian. Uh, he's recruited well at Western Kentucky. He's done good at Georgia Tech. So if you look at uh, a simple blueprint, like he checks those boxes. Now, am I saying he's getting the job? No, but I do think he is a real candidate here. So that's that's one name. And then, you know, some of the names that we brought up on the board would make sense as well with familiarity with, with Georgia and, and that kind of st- uh, class. So um, you know, it's, 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 it's an attractive job. And, uh, I think when it's over, uh, I feel like we're going to be right in, in the fact of, Hey, this guy, this guy's been in this state before this guy's either from this state or he's been in Georgia because the class of 2025 is so good, so deep. And the wide receiver group is uh really, really talented there. Those relationships are super important in the state, not necessarily for helping you get kids, but helping you identify kids. Um, you look at uh, – so I, I think about Josh Crawford and, and his experience in the state. There's no doubt in my mind that helped him get the, the – the, it was Eric Singleton. Is that the kid that he landed? Uh, is that the that is the first name? Yeah, Buster Faulkner actually was one of the guys that offered him. So, you know, there's some ties. And Buster's got a lot of contacts in the state as well, you know. So. Yep, yep. yep. So, um, yeah, I think Buster Faulkner – um, I heard a story Sunday, a matter of fact, that that was one of the first kids he, that they, they got in on when he got there uh, as they reset their board. So, uh, you know, I don't get into Ted Georgia Tech's roster, but some of the things, you know, listen, if he's a candidate right now and from the things I hear behind the scenes, he's he's done a, he's done a good job there. Yeah, and that it's just massive to to get to know these kids in state and you know, have the coaches call, ringing you up and be like, hey, coach, I got one. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that's uh, – that that's you know that's always big. Uh, Glenn Hartley, Uncle Glenn, has a good I mean, question here. Rusty, will it will it reset the running back board if Dell leaves? Yeah, reset the board because it'd be a new coach, and uh, yeah. it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that the guys on the board right now, Georgia will quit recruiting because that person may like the same guys. Uh, but you, you come in as a coach and a philosophy, and you know, from my understanding, Dale had to respect. And Dale had earned the right to basically offer the running backs that he liked. And, you know, obviously as an offensive coordinator between Todd Munkin and Mike Bobo, you were on the same page with that, with those guys. Uh, but, but you know, when you come in as a new coach to Georgia and you kind of say, okay, who are, who are y'all in good with? Okay, I like him. And here's a guy that I like that I've been in on. So those are types of things. But uh, the wide receiver board will reset some too, with whoever comes in. But at the end of the day, Mike Bobo and, and that offensive staff knows who's on the board, who they think they got a good chance with, who's who's Kirby Smart like. It's kind of a group decision, but I, I, I have been told that Dale McGee carried a lot of weight and understandably uh, in those offers uh, because he's been doing this a long, long time. And, uh, you know, he, he made a lot of those offers and uh, decisions on that running back room. And, and that makes sense. Let's get specific here then. Uh, I'll ask you, Bo Walker, um, you know, George has been on him for a while. He's been really impressive. His star is only, you know, mm-hmm. pointed upward further and further. What, what do you think happens there if you had to say right now? It just be who, who comes in and see, know them and how's he feel and those types of things. So uh, he's an in-state kid. So, you know, you're not going to see uh, one of those deals where you quote unquote, the old message board term, somebody get Billy Bobbed for lack of a better term. Uh, he's an in-state kid and, you take a in-state kid early, you rarely see that happen, especially running back. So, you know, Bo Walker had a great state championship game, I thought. Uh, the time I saw him in person, Jeremy Johnson, one of our analysts, had a chance to watch him in semifinals, loved him in person. I had him as a freshman, I believe, at the Georgia Elite Classic game. Had him in a couple of camps and just kept getting bigger and faster. So, you look at Bo Walker, and uh, it, it'll be up to really him. You know, what, what does he feel? And certainly, 
other schools or use that at quick against you quickly. Hey, you got a new guy. We've been recruiting you. So th those types of things. All right. Uh, DGD podcast says, do you make Jimmy Smith say no? I, I don't know that Jimmy Smith would say no, honestly, <laughs> but uh, um, that'd be a, that'd be a great guy to go after. You want to talk about another guy with state of Georgia connections. If you don't talk about Bo Walker, Cedar Grove, uh, <laughs> Jimmy kind of got Cedar Grove going and, uh, you know, he got a chance to go to Georgia state, took that job and did a good job at Georgia state. And then when Sam Pittman went to Arkansas, think about that. Sam Pittman knew Jimmy, um, uh, at Arkansas. And he's like, wait a minute, I, I like this guy. And, and, um, you know, winds up hiring him. Uh, what do you coach? Justin Schaefer at, uh, Cedar Grove. Yeah. Lee, Schaefer, yeah. Corey Johnson. Yeah. yeah. Yep, Tori a Johnson. lot of guys, man. I mean, a, a lot of really That's good players there over the years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ton there. Ton there. Yeah. Jimmy Smith's a really good coach, really highly thought of. I mean, you, you throw, you can go to a, you can go in the metro Atlanta area or, or anywhere where you know coaches are assembled and throw a rock and hit somebody that's got something, you know, hit somebody that's got something good to say about Jimmy Smith. I mean, he's he's one of the best, you know, one of the best high school coaches there. There's a reason that he went from high school head coach to Sam Pittman was like, hey, you want to come? get on the field for me and and coach and recruit and trust you uh, with with everything involved there. And, and it's because Jimmy's such a fine football coach and so well-respected. And um, you look at what he did with that Arkansas running back room. You ran it down the other day, and it was fantastic. I mean, Rocket Sanders and A.J. Green and uh, the back, uh, Rashad Dominion, who's yeah. from Cedar Grove right now. It's a hell of a player there. They, they Jimmy has done a good job. Uh, Rocket Sanders was a hell of an eval you know, for Arkansas because uh, Florida State, he was a Florida kid. If Rocket Sanders stays healthy, he's probably in the NFL. He's had a couple of injuries, and now he's ended up at South Carolina. He went in the portal. Uh, but but I, I think Rocket Sanders was a hell of an even. A.J. Green's a kid out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. They beat some schools there on him. So, uh, you know, he's won some battles. But, I'll, you know, if, if they were to hire Jimmy Smith, uh, Jimmy Smith's going to have a ton of connections in Metro Atlanta. A ton. And, uh, and Bo Walker. All right. Yes. You know, so. Um, yep. All right. Tony Griffin says, do you think George will be looking to add a transfer quarterback in the spring? Rusty, you've been yep. open, honest, and consistent with this. Mm -hmm. Give me an answer. Yep. Well, Rusty's been around a while. So <laughs> I know the people to ask questions to. And uh, when you ask recruits, hey, what's Georgia telling you? And they're like, they're going to take a transfer. Odds are they're going to take a transfer. So if yeah. there's one, now they've made it clear they don't have to, but. Uh, Georgia wants depth, and you can tell Kirby Smart wants depth, and they went after, you know, uh, one from UNLV, lost that deal late. Uh, but if if somebody comes in that portal on April 15th through May the 1st that Georgia thinks can give that room some some depth and experience, it's not going to be – it's going to be somebody with experience, I think. Somebody that understands, hey, Carson Beck's the guy. Can I get to Georgia? Can I wait a year and take a shot at this job? That's that's that, that type of person. Um, and um, – you know, uh, people say, well, why would you do that? Well, I'll tell you why you do that, because you're confident that if you get the job at Georgia at any point, you're going to have a damn wall in front of you, and then you're going to have playmakers all over the place, and it gives you a better opportunity. So uh, I am I do think Georgia is going to have legit interest in adding a transfer portal quarterback in this last portal window, uh, but they're not going to take it just a body. It would have to somebody make sense to them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I think we got one more right here. Uh, I'm sorry. That was not a question. Um, I, I don't call myself Rusty. No, no, I'm not. <laughs> Rusty, the, the artist formerly known as Rusty. Uh, this is one. Hey, what, what do we think about AJ Green as wide receivers coach? What, what you got on that, Rusty? No, so, no, no. He's, he's, uh, what he's, I know uh, about AJ Green is that, I, listen, I, I, I know some people that know AJ pretty well. I think it was Atlanta, right? I think it was Atlanta. I believe so. And I'm telling yeah. you right now, if A.J. Green were to decide he wanted to go ahead and recruit, it would shock me because that just – A.J. seems like the kind of cat that wants to fish in the backyard pond. And think hey, about he's a big bass fisherman. A.J. is real laid back. I don't think that man wants any part of recruiting. If you think about A.J. Green and his recruitment, A.J. Green – it was either AJ Green or Julio, and they were the same deal. You didn't block that call. But yeah, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. I don't know why it's coming. It's going to my computer. My phone's silent. Uh, crazy. So, uh, 
the uh, you think of AJ Green and Julio, they were back and forth in that year, and they wind up going to the NFL, I think, together in 2011. And uh, but here's the thing AJ Green, when he committed to Georgia in the fall of his sophomore year, he was considered the probably at that point the number one player in the country, if not two or three. He was from what is it, Sprint uh, Sumter? Where was he from, South Carolina? Um, over there somewhere about 30 minutes from Columbia. And A.J. Green never took another visit anywhere else. Nobody else could get him on campus. Like, he was done. He was such a rare unicorn. Somerville, South Carolina, I believe. He was such a rare unicorn that back then, that like now, A.J. Green, I mean, you can tell he didn't want no part of recruiting then, much less now. So, you know, everybody pops up, Heinz Ward and Terrence Edwards and A.J. Green. And, you know, I understand. I get that. I understand. But, guys, it's a totally different world. Like, this is not this is not something you just dabble your foot in and go, hey, I think I want to get some of that. Uh, most of those transitions are uh, holy hell. I didn't know it was like this. You know what I mean? Uh, um, you know, you look at some of these guys that I know that personally went into college football, and they're like, I, Joey King, the head coach at Carrollton. He went into college football. He couldn't wait to get a chance to go to college football. Yeah. Well, he got two years of college football. He said, oh, my goodness. Maybe high school football is not so bad. And uh, so that's 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 some of the things there, you know. But uh, certainly any of those guys I think would be good coaches and certainly carry a lot of weight. But it's such a different world, man, when you, you know. And Georgia's not a place where, you know, you're just going to step in there and get a job like that. But, uh, you know, it wouldn't surprise me one day if one of these guys aren't off the field because I know Kirby Smart's close with a lot of these guys. I know Mike Bobo is very close with A.J. Green. I think A.J. Green and I think A.J. Green and Matt Stafford and No Sean, all those guys. I remember seeing that picture out at Colorado State. They all went out and spent a weekend with Mike Bobo when he was there and hung out with him. So, uh, you know, there, there's still some relationship ties with Georgia. There's no doubt in my mind, you know, looking at the NFL, like Keenan McCardell and, and some of these guys that are former receivers that coach at that level, um, there's no doubt in my mind they can do it. Like they they know the position. They they know that, you know, they're technical guys. They they could teach it. They could do it. No doubt in my mind. But it's one of those things, man, where a, the ability to put your heart and soul into something is also a talent. And you've got to. Like there's no – the, this whole thing, I don't care at what level you do it, it will eat you alive if you are not all in on it all the time. That's the biggest difference to me in the guys that are that are great at it and the guys that kind of end up bouncing around. The, the guys that end up bouncing around have talent and they can do it and they can put it together for stretches, but the guys that end up being the best of the best and climbing the ladder and, and are just unstoppable have a drive, man, that they just they can't they can't shut it off. Yeah, they're well, wired different, man. Like yeah. I said, those guys can't those guys can't light a green egg. And um, you know, we <laughs> can't pay the power bill. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess we talked about that. <laughs> sounds, light a green egg. <laughs> sounds like sounds like the clip from Dogs HQ made the uh football yeah. office and uh <laughs> talked talk to some people. Uh they said uh, I guess uh there was a lot of comments on a thread going around about our about our poll who could pay their log on and pay their cable bill. So I think that made the uh, University of Georgia football office. With, so if you are watching, thank you all for and, – and like and subscribe if you don't mind, uh, football office. So that was yeah, cool. We'll take it. We'll take that subscription. If y'all if y'all want to, y'all um, y'all go and, and, and do that. Rusty, one more question here for our man Barry, Rock, Barry Watkins. Uh, will, will Georgia keep Dylan Bell? Uh, Dylan Bell, yeah. I don't I, – he, he – uh, like I said, you know, we talked about that. Todd Munkin, one of his last things he did, and Matt Godwin's talked about it. They didn't know really know who he was. He was on another field, and Will Muschamp was on that field. Brought Dylan Bell over to Todd Munkin. They worked him out, liked him. They're like, wait a minute, who's this guy? Bring him back. I think a week later, work him out again, just to make sure it wasn't a one-hit wonder. And they offered him that day. Uh, you know, so what I know. Yeah, I, I don't think I don't think that's going to be an issue. I, I think there was some concerns, you know, with with back in January with him, but uh, it seems to be fine and and staying. And listen, if you're Dylan Bell, after you see how you were used later in the year, and you know you got Carson Beck, and you know you're going to be a pivotal point uh, of this offense, you know, I mean, this this is not a greener pasture place than Georgia. 
So especially if you know you're in that top three or four wide receivers, which he he is, and he gets to, you know, multi-package type deal with the running back stuff, and that just makes him look even better on tape, man. And he plays special teams. So, you know, that's uh to me, that's um uh, that that is uh invaluable. I think Dylan Bell, listen, I'm not gonna sit here and get into what we think. Uh Georgia's gonna lose some players. I'm just telling you that, that they've got to lose some players between April 15th and May 1st. They're, so, they're like 91 guys on scholarship right now, so they're going to have to drop a few. I mean, I don't know the whole number, and Kirby Smart will bury that with him one day, probably in a piece of paper in his pocket. But I can assure you, I went to public school, but the math is not there on that roster. Our man Palmer stays on that. So they're going to lose some guys, and there'll be some guys that go, hey, I've been through spring, and you know what, man, I, I can't – I'm not going to get on the field this fall, and I can some other places. So, you know, you obviously root for those guys too. But uh, Georgia will have some attrition, and uh, not going to sit here and speculate on, on that. We, we will know more as it gets closer. But you can anticipate three, four minimum uh, leaving this roster between April 15th and um, May the 1st. And a lot of it could be kids like, listen, I'm going to stay through spring, and I'm going to give it a shot. And, you know, and you never know. Hell, Jake, some of these freshmen get in front of you and you go, my God, the guy in front of me was good. And then this dude shows up on damn campus and now I'm battling with him. So that, 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 you know, you, you see them in pads for nobody sees a team like a kid that's in the same room with you. I know. Yes, that's a hundred percent true. And we talk about Xavier story and we talk about Jamon Dumas Johnson and all those guys that left that room. And I'm not going to sit here and put words in their mouth. But nobody practiced with C.J. Allen and Raylan Wilson more than all those guys. Yeah, nobody nobody saw them every workout, every run, every walkthrough as much as their teammates did. And, they're, and the teammates are wired different. The coaches are like, hey, I'm not going to think about the fact that I might lose them because I don't want to think about losing them because I want to keep everybody. The players themselves are sitting there making business decisions, and they're like, listen, they know – they're ballers, man. They're, they're in the game. They know – how much it means. Uh, Nathan, uh, my man Nathan Johnston here uh, saying, is Bell the next Debo Samuel? Listen, that's a high bar to set. Um, I'll say this. You know, I've, I've heard, you know, things like Percy Harvin, not nowhere near that at the college level. I've heard Debo Samuel, Cord Cordero Patterson, you know, that that type of multi-tool athlete. I think Dylan Bell can be that, but but I think Dylan Bell is more true wide out than maybe those guys were. He's got – listen to me. Percy Harvin, there's no comparison. Like, Percy Harvin, one of the best 20 players. Uh, he was an absolute you-know-what off the field. But you you watch those documentaries on Florida. One of the most explosive cats that's ever played yeah, this game. Everybody talks about he was the best player in Florida. I mean, Tebow gets all the praise, and he should. But the, the best player on that team, pound for pound, was Percy Harvin. So, I would never put that on someone. But Dylan Bell's got better ball skills than I thought, and he has some great contested catches. Uh, I think he sees the field great. Look, it's invaluable for him, man, to be able to play some running back, to be able to play some special teams, and to be able to to out there. I'm excited about him. I think Arians – One player I am more excited about yeah. going into the 2024 season. 20, yeah, 24 season. I almost got my years mixed up than, yeah. than Dylan Bell. I think he uh, – I think that guy is uh, Arian Smith, too. You know, we just keep waiting. Can he get consistent? Can he get consistent? And I was excited that Aaron Smith stayed. There were some rumors about him, and, uh, you know, they used him a lot more as the year went on. So I, I'm just excited about some of those guys. But Dylan Bell, man, he is he, – he, Dylan Bell, the best compliment I can give you for Dylan Bell is he will drive a defensive coordinator crazy because of the packages and the mismatches. You can't you – can't, you can't ISO him on some middle linebacker in space because he'll run right by him, especially out of the backfield. So I think he's also going to be a red zone deal. You know, a good package there for Georgia uh, as he gets forward. But listen, the biggest thing, man, is stay damn healthy. I mean, Georgia did all this offensively. They split up all these points. They set all these damn records. And if, I, if Mike Bobo were to join us right now, I would love to hear him say how many games he had a truly healthy package. I mean, Brock Bowers. Uh, Lad McConkey, all these dudes, Dylan Bell, all these guys were beat to hell at times. And I, I know everybody saw the tweet between Der Daniel Jeremiah yesterday breaking down tape on Lad McConkey. It's a shame that Georgia uh, fans didn't get a good year of Lad McConkey, man. The kid just fought, fought, and fought through injury after injury after injury, never really got healthy. And uh, But uh, that Lad McConkey's going to make some money in two weeks, man. I'm excited to watch him work out. They're due. As we brought up recently, it's been 2018 since Georgia's really been able to stay healthy at receiver. It, I mean, it's 
It was Lawrence Cager in 19. It was a few guys in 20. It was a few guys in 21. I mean, your list goes on and on and on. Last year, 2022, it was A.D. Mitchell missing most of the year. So it's, you know, it's one of those things. Georgia's do, and uh, who are interested to see who's going to be coaching them. Interested to see what the staff's going to look like. And uh, listen, spring practice, man, is right around the corner, just a couple, two or three weeks away. We'll have it covered for you over at Dogs HQ. We'll be back on Sunday to talk at you and hopefully with a little bit of news on, on maybe a hire or maybe some other stuff going on. But for this episode of the Georgia show, I'm Jake Rose, Rusty Mansell. Y'all have a great, great weekend.